So I'm going to introduce the next speaker, which is me. Uh, it's a good thing, you know, being the conference organizer, you have, you know, you have these certain rights that, you know, can make small changes to the program. And unfortunately, a good friend of mine, Paul Moore, he couldn't make it. Uh, but I'm going to do a very, well, I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to try to be quick on this one um, and talk a little bit about keystroke dynamics. And, and the basics here are very simple. Here's a kitten for you. Uh, when it comes to biometrics, you can put it into two categories. Physiological, which is, you know, how your face looks like, fingerprint, hand, iris, DNA. And you have behavioral biometrics, which is more like, you know, how you type on a keyboard, how you do your signature, how you do your voice. You know, you can sync to your computer to log on, as an example. Now, this is a little bit about the behavioral biometrics. And there are some cool stuff that you can do when it comes to, you know, tracking people. Uh, as an example, there have been done research into looking at parameters that enables you on the server side to see what is the current battery sta status of the client visiting you. Now, your battery status on your phone or your laptop or iPad is not at the same as the one sitting next to you. So based on that, there's actually opportunity to distinguish different people from each other, which is kind of cool and it's also kind of scary. Now, for behavioral biometrics, you know, there are some good things you can do with that. You can use it as an invisible two-factor authentication. Most banks in Norway, and also some banks here in the UK, are already using Keystroke Dynamics to look at how you type your password when you log on, and they use that as a fraud detection mechanism. Now, I discovered this back uh, you know, uh, during the summer in Norway that the banks were using that. And they had told nobody. They implemented this more than a year ago, but it didn't change the end user li license agreement. They didn't change anything. They didn't announce anything at all. They thought they had it covered. And suddenly, like, by implementing this in just a couple of days, pretty much, like a week, they have a biometric keystroke dynamics profile of 3.5 million adult Norwegians, approximately. And it's also interesting because this doesn't, you know, compare to like using cookies in a browser, this actually identifies you as a human being and not the browser or your computer by itself. So it enables you to do lots of, well, again, cool stuff. Uh, you can use it without requiring a login. Uh, you can do keystroke, like, you know, how you type on your keyboard. You can also look at mouse movements and you can also look, look at, you know, how you touch your screen. Uh, as far as I know in this area, and this is not my specialty, but I've been told that as, as soon as you have done three, maybe four swipes across your phone, like looking at the picture gallery, those three or four strokes across the screen is sufficient to identify you from most other people, believe it or not. And you can also do the enrollment of this because, you know, looking at your keystroke dynamics as an example, do require you to do a little bit of, you know, typing. So you could either say that, but at sign up, you have to ten enter your password like 10 times so we can build this profile of you, or they can just use 10 logins into the future to build the profile of you, assuming that it's the same person that are logging in each and every time, which it, well, hopefully for your bank account, it will be the same person logging in every time. But there are also some bad sides to this, and that's basically, well, the left column here, uh, they can identify you instead of your computer. Suddenly, if you are using your Mac at the moment, and they have a profile of you, and then you move on to another computer and start typing in there instead, you don't have the same cookie, the same tracking cookie on both computers but it is the same human being typing on both computers, and suddenly they could be able to see that, well, it's you and nobody else that is logging in right now. And the keystroke dynamics are based on several parameters, but it, it could be explained as something as simple as, for how long will you actually keep a key pressed, and what is the flight time between two or a small sequence of, of keys on your keyboard, as an example. 
What you can do is you can go online. I had Professor Christoph Rosenberger from France presenting at PasswordsCon in 2012. And he has this software that you can see a screenshot of on this address. It's available for free for Windows. And basically, he collects input time between two key pressures, time between one release and one pressure, one pressure and one release, and time between two keys release. And those four parameters, you can play around with it. I've set a password as my password. You just type it in, and you will immediately see the results. So this is me typing password. And this one spike is a very small, like 10, 20, 30 millisecond delay on one of those keys. And you can see immediately how it differentiates. I have the software on my laptop. If you want to try afterwards, you can do that. I can type in password, and we can see if any one of you are able to type in password just the same way as I do, as an example. Now, when I came across this, I've been thinking, because I like to break stuff, so how can I break this? Or eventually, how can I break the fact that this can be used against me to track me? I do appreciate the anti-fraud detection systems that are being used with my bank, but I'm not quite sure if I like this for, as an example, advertising tracking, as an example. So one of the examples that I and Paul talked about is, well, people are using Tor. People are using the Tor browser to stay anonymous on the internet. And BehaviorSec, which is one of the companies doing this kind of software, we were using them specifically to try to you know, break their solution. And basically we said, well, BehaviorSec requires a JavaScript to be run. So if you do allow JavaScript in your Tor browser, they can build a profile of you, and they will be able to recognize you on another computer running Tor, as an example, as long as you allow JavaScript. Now, if you're a bad guy and you don't want anyone to be able to recognize you, track you using Tor, suddenly this could be a potential way of being able to identify people. And in another case, if you're doing forensics, if you're working for the police for any kind of government institution or whatever it is, and you're doing research online on the dark web, and you don't want to be tracked either, then this could also be a potential problem. But again, BehaviorSec uses JavaScript, so if you disable that, you're pretty well off. The advertising example is something as simple as you go online to an electronics store and you're looking for a new vacuum cleaner. You have never been to this site before. You have no cookies from them, nothing. And if you just type in vacuum cleaner in the search field of this online shop, you have to know that as soon as you have typed seven to eight characters on your keyboard, there's already enough information to tell whether you are male or female. So, you type in vacuum cleaner, and they know, well, it's a man looking for vacuum cleaner, so you will get the blue one or the black one on top. And if you're female, you will present it with all the colors <laughs> available. I'm not going to say any specific colors, I'm afraid of it. I learned my lesson. So, it's kind of fascinating. So basically, what I did, I, I talked, I, you know, I've been thinking about this since like 2012 and before that. And my thought is, well, I have to even out all those key presses so, you know, I looked like just like anybody else. I was thinking tool style. But then I, well, I had several talks with, with Paul in the late evening on Skype, one of the things that we do. And I told him about this idea and I said, well, we could, you know, even out all the keystrokes, so all of the keystrokes looks the same, or we could eventually also maybe do randomness, but my idea was, you know, let's just even out everything. And Paul said, well, but if all the keystrokes are coming in evenly, you know, that's a sign that somebody is doing something, you know, ho you know, weird, and that again makes them, you know, stand out from the crowd. So he said, let's add randomness. And then we, ha then we have this company, BehaviorSec, doing this stuff online. They have a demo site where you can try it out for free. And the first initial proof of concept 
plugin for Google Chrome that Paul created in like minutes was one line of JavaScript code adding randomness to every keystroke going from the keyboard into the DOM of the browser. And suddenly the det detection rate of behavior sec went from 99% to 0.01%. And that was one line proof of concept JavaScript code. So I said, well, <laughs> you can't go to sleep now, Paul. I want a Chrome plugin. So here it is. It's called Keyboard Privacy. It's available for Google Chrome. It's for free. You can download it, and there's a button if you want to disallow it for separate services, like you know I do for my online bank. I actually want them to be able to do this tracking, so nobody else will be able to log into my bank account, as an example. For other sites, by default, this is running. So essentially, the default settings will, for each and every key press you do, that it will insert a randomness of 0 to 50 milliseconds. And that's more than sufficient to completely break all the tracking that they are eventually doing to you. And trust me, myself and Paul, we were having lots of fun those late evenings back in the end of July, like thinking that like, okay, so the biometrics guys have been working on this for like 10, 15 years at least. And here we are, like two guys, late in the evening on Skype, and Paul does one line in JavaScript code, and we have completely broken 15 years of research. Yay! Kind of fun. Sorry, guys. And today, because we promised people that we would do a Firefox plugin, that proved quite a bit more difficult than we thought. And we also thought that we, you know, we went into full paranoid mode. So we thought, well, your operating system could be compromised. They could be doing this kind of tracking from your operating system. So Paul was actually going to be here today to present our small, our very small USB hardware dongle that goes between your keyboard and your computer. That will do this for you. And Paul called me on Monday saying that, shit, we have a problem. Uh, because this small dongle, it works, uh, but it only works with UK keyboard layout. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some USB stuff that we need to figure out. So, uh, so I'm kind of here to say, like, well, you can't buy it today. We, we were hoping that this would be, you know, the, the greatest Christmas present for you ever <laughs> that you could purchase from me today. But, uh, well, we have the devices, and we are going to take pre orders very soon for that. Um, and paranoid friends, families, or anyone else that doesn't want to get tracked by Keystroke Dynamics, please give me a call. Find me on Twitter, email, and so on. And thank you. <laughs>